Hello everybody, welcome to Shifty's Club. Guys, if you're just watching this just for the fun of it, go ahead. However, this video is not meant for my YouTube channel, but rather as an upload for the NCAA Playoff Committee and the NCAA Football Board of Directors. What you see on this chart in front of you is the Dan Samples Playoff System. Now, in this system, we would have a much better layout than the one we have now, where only four teams go in and some very hardworking teams are left out of it. Now, we know teams like Houston, undefeated, well, the resume doesn't really stack up, so we just leave them out. Well, they at least have some sort of excuse as to not be in the playoffs because they didn't do anything wrong. They won all their games. They played tough games against Temple, who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Notre Dame, Memphis, who beat Ole Miss, and Houston's able to roll through these teams. So if Houston goes undefeated, there is no there's no guess that Houston should, should be in the playoffs. But, of course, the playoff committee doesn't see it the same way I do because of their strength of schedule and some in-game statistical um, crap. So, we are going to go to the rules of the playoff system, if it were be the playoff system that I created. The first rule is at least eight teams must be in. Okay. The reason why the chart is organized the way it is, is because of a very, very weird uh, type of structure. If you notice, the teams are all like this, where two teams have to play each other. This one is basically an if scenario. If this team exists, then they play this team. If this team exists, they play this team, and then this team would play this team. Basically, it's a, it's a better scenario to cover all the gaps that we originally have. Then you have a maximum of 16 teams allowed. Of course, usually with my um, playoff system, it's not going to run down to 16 teams, or it shouldn't. Then, if slots remain after teams fitting parameters are chosen, if they stay empty, if at least eight teams fit. Now, usually eight teams will fit the scenario. <laughs> Just saying, usually that will happen. Um, sometimes, I mean, in very, very few scenarios, I've looked down through time and I could not find a single time where the last 50 years that eight teams would not fit what I have on here. <laughs> and I've only seen one in history where 17 exactly would be used. And I really don't think that that's going to happen again based on a lot of <laughs> very specific parameters here. Um, and then we have um, the determination is three stages of priority used in determination of placement. Now, I'll get to those uh, stages of priority later, but first, I want to get to this next one. Um, the way teams are determined in order of their priority, basically, you have three stages of priority. And say you have one stage of priority, you have nine teams you would use basically what the playoff committee uses now, strength of schedule, quality wins and losses, and, and what I invented called an in-game statistical power, which is a single number that is based off an algorithmic function that combines the quality of basically points for and against, uh, passing and rushing yards for and against, uh, turnover margins in both uh, sides of the ball, basically. Um, and of course, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Even the kicking game goes into it. So yes. Um, and it's usually just one number that can be factored in with the strength of schedule and quality wins and losses. Of course, I'd rather just base it off the in-game statistical power to begin with. Now, three stages of priority, like I was talking about before. The first one is priority one, which are undefeated teams, X and O. Now, obviously, some teams may not have a conference championship, so one team might have one more win than the other. 
So that's why I have X and O, because you really don't know how that's going to play out. And then you have priority two, which is X and one. X and one is a little different because this is all one loss teams. Now, generally speaking, your one loss teams wouldn't all need to be in this playoff system. But in this one, it does. It can cover all of your one loss teams. Uh, generally speaking, I would have the all power five one loss teams. But I'm also going to cover the other conferences as well that are in the 1A. Um, then you have priority three. And this is a very specific priority. This is X and two, basically two losses, but they only go to conference champions with two losses or teams with losses only to teams already in the playoff bracket. And then I have a note that says stacking is allowed. Okay, let me explain that. Conference champions that are two losses, that's pretty obvious. Basically, let's say um, a team, even if they're in a different conference than the Power Five, wins the champ wins their conference championship and they're two losses. They would automatically go because they're a two-loss conference champion. And then you have teams with only losses to teams already in the playoff bracket. This one's going to be very, very hard to find a team that fits this description. Uh, basically, you would have to look through every single two-loss team to determine who their losses were to. Um, and say a team beat, uh, or say a team got beat by one undefeated team and a one-loss team. See that that was the outcome. That means that team would make the playoffs because of that. And just for craps and giggles, let's say that that team and another team that they play were the two losses of another team. Sure, put them in. Because they stack. And it's basically you have one team playing against a, that lost against a two-loss team who lost against a one-loss and an undefeated. And then, of course, they lost against the undefeated. Okay. Let's take it into a mock situation now. Basically, here's what it would look like. Now, I'm going to stress this, and I'm going to stress this about four times so idiots uh, idiots for the playoff committee and the NCAA board of directors can you know understand this. This is a mock. This is not real. This is not my prediction of the playoff system, and this will not happen this year. Wanted to get that out of there. Okay, now you have obviously priority one. Let's assume that in, in um, a mock year, we have two undefeated teams, Iowa and Houston. Now, if that's all we had, then we would take those two teams, bring them over here into our strength of schedule, quality wins, losses, and game statistical power to determine exactly who should go one and two. Now, after that, we take all of our priority two teams and basically uh, one loss teams, and we're going to put them all into the playoff bracket. But first, we take them all to the strength of schedule, quality loss, and give statistical power. Then, now note that the people. Please do not argue that one team's over in another place or another team's over another. Like I said, it's a mock. I'm not saying people are going to say, why, are, why is Alabama up there and Baylor's down here? Or why is Stanford there and Memphis? I don't, you know, it's a mock. <laughs> Just to let you know, it's a mock. Okay, so let's say you had, in the sequence, you had Baylor, Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Stanford, Memphis, Notre Dame, uh, Oklahoma State, and Toledo. All one-loss teams who, <clears throat> who are put in order between their strength of schedule, quality loss, and against the physical power. Now, um, that would cover 11 slots in our playoff system. These, this priority three is very hard to find any teams, though. It's very, very hard to find teams. So we are just going to create a situation where two teams, um, Appalachian State and Boise State, were to be two-loss conference champions, meaning that 
with strength of schedule, quality wins, losses, and games, statistical power, Boise State would go at 12. Appalachian State would go at 13. You know, it's just a mop, like I said. And then we would take teams whose only losses are to playoff berth losses. Basically, if their team is already in the bracket, then analyze who has lost only against these teams. Well, I'm going to use somewhat of a real-life scenario, though. Um, I just take this team because this conference seems to be, you know, possible for this to happen. Say Houston and Temple, or sorry, sorry, Houston and uh, Memphis are Temple's only losses. Sorry, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, if Houston and Memphis are Temple's only losses and they're in the playoff bracket, Temple would go and then go at the empty slot at 14. Now, say there are no other teams left. Just say, for instance, that no other teams are left. All the other two lost teams have lost at least one game to a team who is not in this playoff bracket. That means that your last two slots go into buys. Now, why would they go into buys? Why wouldn't you just fill them up? Well, the reason why is because no teams match the parameters of Priority 1, Priority 2, or Priority 3 as of now. So those teams have no excuse as to why they're not in the playoff bracket. Now, there could be a team somewhere, some way, that is a three-loss team that lost against, say, just for instance, they lost against Iowa, uh, Houston, and, or, and Alabama. Just say, for instance, those were their losses for some odd reason. Then... They're three loss. They cannot complain. <laughs> Basically, if you lose three games, I don't believe that you should be in a playoff. You shouldn't be in a playoff because if you, I'll, if you're a two loss conference champion, that means you beat everybody in your conference pretty much, or maybe one loss in your conference. But usually, most of your teams who are X and two are X and O in conference, or even just one loss to a conference. Uh, powerhouse ah. like for instance if um, Boise State lost to <clears throat> Utah State and um, say Chucky e. Keaton was <clears throat> up for a Heisman <laughs> just say for instance he was he was up for a Heisman um, Boise State lost to them um, and Boise State lost to, uh, I don't know, just pick a random team, uh, Stanford, who cares? Um, <clears throat> say in that situation, um, that would be a very possible situation that uh, that takes place. Um, now, some people are like, is it possible to have a three-loss conference champion? Well, yes, it is, of course. Say, for instance, that a three-loss conference champion had to play Clemson, Ohio State, and... Um, Alabama, who knows, who cares. Anyway, just say they had to play all three of those games. They've won their conference undefeated in their conference should they go to the playoff system. In some regards, some people would make the excuse that, yes, they should go to the playoff system. However, I'm going to say no to that because, again, they lost three games. And I'm not one who likes to... <clears throat> Uh, put a team with three losses into this because one of those games they should have at least won because if you can't beat if you can't beat one of these teams in the regular season how are you going to beat them in the playoffs that's just my philosophy on it and usually I'm right when it comes to this kind of philosophy um, but I mean it's very true. Um, and then you have teams are just going to stack down. Of course, people would argue things like Houston. Uh, Houston shouldn't be that high up. But again, it's priority. Of course, Houston's undefeated. You don't know how good Houston truly is in a game against opponents like Iowa, Clemson, Baylor, Alabama. You have no idea how good they truly are. That's, that's basically the difference here. <laughs> um, and then... Um, of course, like I said, if you have buys, just place them in there. Um, say, for instance, you only had um, 10 teams that fit the 
that fit the profiles of those three priorities, fit the 10 teams in, throw in six bots. Here's another situation though. Say for instance, and in some very weird imagination land, that only seven teams fit the priorities, which is almost impossible. Okay, that means that you would have to have the Power Five, so you had five Power uh, Five uh, school or conferences, and the other conferences right here. Say, for instance, every last one of these teams, uh, you had one losses somewhere around here. You had two loss conference champions. And then you had three lost conference champions, and then uh, all these teams down here. None of these teams fit the profile. And in the big, uh, <clears throat> in the Power Five, you have say, um, one say one undefeated team. You have uh, three teams who are one loss. All these are conference champions. Um, you have a two lost conference champion. You have two more uh, one loss teams, and that's it. Just say, for instance, that's it. In that situation, remember the rule. At least eight teams must be in the playoff. So, meaning there has to be an eighth team placed in there. The craziness about this is to fit one extra team into the playoff when only seven teams fit the parameters. Then I use a um, split algorithmic function to determine the closest two lost team or um, <clears throat> the closest two lost team who either lost to only uh, undefeated and uh, one lost teams which would already be in the bracket or if they only lost to a two lost team to begin with if their final lot at the final records they lost against a two lost team and an undefeated or one lost team of course then I would have to slide that team into eight because of the at least eight teams must be in rule. And then I'd have to tweak the uh, algorithmic function to fit a priority that is uh, split into a another direction, which is kind of a weird way of saying it. Um, but anyway, this is my playoff system. I think I've covered just about every uh, question that you could possibly have. Um, if I haven't, just let me know. Um, Basically, I'm am posting this on YouTube um, because I did come up with this playoff system and uh, the system, the rules, and even a mock situation to demonstrate uh, what would happen. And uh, of course, I'm not going to demonstrate, you know, who I who I'd pick in this mock situation for fun. I mean, you can you can play that out yourself. I mean, in this bracket, I would more than likely say that um, Alabama would end up playing against uh, probably either Notre Dame or Iowa. I'd have no idea. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's my playoff system. Um, and I hope the NCAA uh, football board of directors and the playoff committee both like this idea of the playoff system the Dan Samples playoff system, and hope that it'll be used for next year's um, next year's playoffs. So, um, just to recap, uh, I'm Dan Samples, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.